Hi, I'm Nancy Sharma. Hi, I'm Gretchen Casey. Thank you so much for joining our presentation today. Our presentation is Take Control of Your Wealth, Learn About Investing in Private Mortgages. Nancy and I respect that your time is valuable, and we think you will be very happy with this investment in yourself and your future to learn about being the banker. We have a fantastic tool for you, our book for private lenders called Be the Banker. When you email us, we'll be happy to send you a free copy of this valuable ebook that walks you through your journey to private lending. This way, you won't have to be frantic about your note taking. All of the details are in this amazing ebook. My name is Gretchen Casey, and I'm a mortgage agent with Mortgage Alliance and an investor specialist on the Windrose Group Mortgage Team. I've been a trusted agent since 2004, which is 15 years. But time has flown because I do love what I'm doing. I'm in the Mortgage Alliance Elite Club, being in their top 10% of agents from across Canada. And if you Google me, you'll find that I'm a certified three best rated business. I empower entrepreneurs and real estate investors with out of the box optimal solutions, getting them the money they need to create their dreams. You might still be wondering what makes me an expert in private lending. I'm trained in explaining things like the cost of funds, cap rate, and return on investment. I have tips to share with you on how to protect your assets with mortgages and lending. I understand what exit strategies are reasonable to pay out a private mortgage at the end of the term to repay you as the lender. There are other experts I work with as well, like accountants, financial advisors, and lawyers to help you minimize your tax burden. And if you need a JV partner, my experience and connections are invaluable. Having a long-term strategy for your acquisition combined with my lender placement knowledge is, all, is key. Also, I am an investor and a lender myself. Thank you, Gretchen. Hello again, I'm Nancy Sharma, a certified financial planner with TD Wealth. I hold the certified financial planner and chartered investment manager designations. With over 10 years of experience in financial planning, cash flow management, retirement income, and tax planning. Given my experience, I've seen it all, and I'm confident that I can help you achieve your financial goals. We take a holistic approach to review your goals and prepare a customized financial plan for you. We also collaborate with mortgage agents accountants, and lawyers to provide the right advice for your situation. Life is dynamic, and as you progress through the different stages of life, we'd like to help you understand the financial impacts to your longer-term goals. Can you afford to retire? What does your retirement lifestyle look like? Have you considered the tax consequences of your decisions and are your interests protected after you pass? Talk to me and Gretchen, and we'd be happy to help you understand the next best steps. Let's review the traditional cycle of life. What is expected of us? We go to school, get a job, enter into partnership, have children, and retire while working for the same organization throughout our entire life. This conventional model may have worked for previous generations, but with advancements in technology, people are choosing to create a balance between work and life on their own terms. Now more than ever, individuals are looking to alternative investment solutions to help build their wealth. Wealth and sustainable cash flow before retirement are achievable. Before retiring, while you have a healthy income, you may want to consider applying for a home equity line of credit as your chances of getting approved and the amount to borrow may be greater. You don't have to wait until retirement 
to be the banker. Be proactive with wealth creation. Connect with us to explore the best options for your needs and take advantage of opportunities such as low interest rates so that you can live the lifestyle you have become accustomed to even in retirement. What does wealth creation look like for you? You may have accumulated savings in a number of accounts and have access to government or work pensions. But what does that mean to you? Will it be enough to travel each year? Have you explored ways to split retirement income and minimize potential tax consequences? Let's help you figure it out. Now let's take a look at how investing in real estate is an important part of your wealth creation. If you are new to investing and aren't sure where to start, I find it helpful to look at the three wealth buckets. Then you can decide which one or ones resonate with your desire to be active or passive, what time frame you'd like to hold each property or mortgage, and ask, ask yourself, do you like to work on your own or with partners? The first bucket is quick cash. That includes things like flips, where you buy, renovate, and sell, and hopefully the market stays in line with your anticipated selling price, your, that you budgeted properly and completed the project on time. Or there is the Burr strategy, and that is where you buy, renovate, refinance, and rent the property out to a tenant. Rent to own gives you access to, to have cash flow, and it's a longer term investment, usually three years. Wholesaling is when you purchase a property under market value and then you assign the contract to another buyer. And assignments is when you buy a property and then allow another buyer to take over your rights and obligations before closing. And this is done via an assignment clause in the purchase agreement, and it's more commonly done with new construction homes. The next wealth building block is called cash flow. And in this category, you outright own or are part of a joint bank venture with actual real estate that provides income and after expenses generates a monthly positive cash flow. Your most important asset is your ability to learn, earn money and this is a vehicle to do that by buying and owning real estate. That includes owning rental properties and being the landlord and rent to own also falls in this category. And then we have multifamily building ownership or also the opportunity for quick cash and commercial property ownership, including things like storage units, industrial units, mixed use with storefront and apartments. And the next bucket is called portfolio income. And this is where being the banker falls. You have funds that you want to invest to get a higher return. And you may also borrow to make money from your line of credit, for example, at a lower interest rate, and then relend out at a higher interest rate for a net profit you are actually being the banker for a change. You can use your RSP, Lira, TFSA, and self-direct the funds. You have the same security of real estate without you being a landlord, so it's a more passive form of investing without the day-to-day -day headaches. You also can invest in private markets and REITs, which are also real estate investment trusts. Thanks for explaining that in detail, Gretchen. Ignorance is not bliss when it comes to your finances. You need to take control, get educated, understand your options, and seek out professionals. If you had half a million dollars invested in the financial markets and experienced a market pullback that re-evaluated your portfolio at $450,000, how would you feel experiencing a 10% dip in your portfolio value? Working with accredited professionals can help provide you with peace of mind and guidance around your goals, risk tolerance, and time horizon to invest. Be the chief financial officer of your portfolio. You can control not just how you spend, but how your assets grow. Regardless of your age, it's important to understand your financial situation. You need to know where you are and where you want to be in order to map the course. 
it's always a great idea to check in with professionals for a second opinion and seek guidance on ways to tweak what they're doing, lower your tax liabilities, increase equity or assets, and grow your net worth. Your financial situation doesn't have to be scary. Paint the picture you would enjoy seeing by being proactive. Educate yourself on the solutions available to you. Connect with professionals like Gretchen and myself to help you navigate the best option for your personal situation. I often ask clients what the funds that they hold are invested in. And they always tell me that, you know, I'm just invested with the bank. It could be invested in stocks, bonds, ETFs, or GICs in cash. You know where your money is invested and if it's working to help achieve your goals. Do you know if you are impacted by any of the current market volatility that we're experiencing? Get a clear picture of exactly where your investments are and if they make sense for you and your goals. If not, you may want to consider exploring alternative options. The most powerful force in the universe is compound interest. This quote by Albert Einstein will be used to walk through an example that we'll, we'll discuss right now. Have you heard of the rule of 72? We have an example that we can go through together. Here, money was invested in a GIC that's paying 1.75%. It would take you 41 years to double your investment. Where other, another investment that's earning you 10%, either in the financial markets or in real estate, would take you only 7.2 years to double your investment. That's a huge difference in time that you may not have if you plan on retiring in the next five to 10 years. Whether you choose to invest in the financial markets or in private lending, the opportunities are available for you to maximize your investments. Work with us to review your risk tolerance, cash flow needs, and time horizon to invest so that we can help you prepare a holistic plan that demonstrates a well-diversified approach to achieving your financial goals. Returns in both avenues can be comparable. However, there are many other personal factors to consider, and oftentimes clients will utilize both options of private lending and investing in financial markets to build wealth. Let's talk about how you can get a piece of this action. That cake looks pretty good. Connect with us to learn how you can take control of your finances by leveraging your savings. You can use your RSP, Lira, RIF, and tax-free savings account as you direct where the money is invested. You can lend out your registered funds for the purpose of private lending, which would be an alternative to the traditional stocks, bonds, and cash investments offered by many financial institutions. Let's take a moment to think about the time value of money. We look at investments such as real estate and mutual funds as ways to passively invest our money so that over time, we benefit from compound growth. This allows us to increase our net worth without having to physically tend to the asset on a daily basis to receive income like we would with a salaried job or without being a landlord. There are options to use your available cash, investment accounts, or even the equity in your home where the interest is tax deductible. To find out which option is best for you, speak with us. Okay, so let's talk about the overall process involved in lending your funds as a private mortgage lender and being the banker. First, it's my job as your mortgage broker to find the borrowers and review their situation. I find out the good, the bad, and the ugly about their situation and the deal at hand, and I pre-screen the borrowers. 
Next, the level of risk involved is assessed by the mortgage broker as well. That information has to be compiled into an application and summary, along with supporting documentation, which includes credit bureaus, proof of income, proof of any existing mortgages that are secured on the property, and determining the exit strategy to pay you out at the end of the term. Then it's your responsibility as a lender to review what I'm going to show you and determine if you'd like to move forward. You may want an appraisal or do a drive by the home or have a personal visit to the borrowers yourself. You could request photos and a property tax assessment, for example. Initially, you are given a purview report from me and that provides recent sale information for similar properties in the same area to assess a starting point for the property value. Next, we negotiate the terms of the mortgage. And as your mortgage broker, I suggest the rate and fees that are reasonable based on the current private lending market and the particular application. And I give you a draft of a term sheet for you and your lawyer to review. And that is a service I offer you as your broker. There's no cost for you for any of this, by the way. You are the one who has the goals. You ultimately get to determine the terms and conditions and the borrower pays almost all of the fees involved. If you're not using cash for the transaction, but are using your RSPs or TFSAs, the mortgage will be administrated by a trustee and you do pay fees to the trustee. So that is the one cost you incur. They do have rules around the repayment, renewal, and obtaining an annual mortgage statement and such. The three trustees in Canada are Olympia Trust, Community Trust, and Canadian Western Trust. And I do help you to set up trust with these. If you're not using an RSP, but instead of using cash, then you are, act as your own administrator of the mortgage. So why do you need a mortgage agent to do this work for you? You may wonder, why not just find the borrowers yourself? Here are some things to keep in mind and why having a mortgage broker can be in your best interest. The process for, the process for a novice is complicated, for one. Also, how do you know how to evaluate the borrower and the property? Bad things do happen to good people, and we work with people who have experienced a blip or a temporary situation that put them off course, and they want to get back on track. So we help find those types of borrowers for you. The agreement and the terms that the mortgage broker suggests are sound and realistic, so this benefits both parties. Something else is mentioned is that the funds are usually invested as a self-directed RSP, which means that the funds are not fully liquid without tax implications. So once one borrower returns the funds that are owed at the end of the term, the funds do come back to you in your RSP account, and then they can be lent out to another borrower, or you can do with as you wish within that registered fund. Something else to keep in mind is that there is a collection of the payments done via post-dated checks or e-transfer, and the mortgage broker helps to ensure that the payments are made. As a mortgage broker, we build a strong bond with you and or the borrower, and so that we can think of ways to, if there's any issue with payment, the borrower will let us know so it can be proactive. As the broker in the transaction, we do as much as possible to avoid default, but if it does happen, a lender or the borrower notifies me immediately, and in most cases, the payment is made right away. I'll go into this further in a few minutes. One last thing to keep in mind is that the funds are part of a contract, so you can't pull the money out during the term, even if a better opportunity to make more money comes your way. So moving forward, the private lender is about finding your personal balance. In finding that balance, here are some issues for you to consider. First, the rate of return for private mortgage interest is generally high in terms of investing world. And keep in mind, the terms for lending do have to be fair. I'm not involved in loan sharking or taking advantage of anyone, and I'm sure you don't want to do that either. You do have the property as security. If there is a default situation, since you are registered on the mortgage charge on title, you do have a real estate lawyer representing yourself and a lawyer representing the borrower. The property can't be sold without the lien holders being involved and notified. If the borrower defaults, you may have the opportunity to take over the property and any other existing mortgage payments to avoid a loss. You may even end up owning a property 
And you may not view that as a bad thing if you are open to having that property in your portfolio. With this investment in mortgages, you have the opportunity to diversify your investment portfolio, not having all your eggs in one basket. And there are no landlord headaches. This gets you into the real estate investment market without having to own property yourself or worry about managing a property and tenants. There are tax benefits in that you can use your RSP and shelter the profits from tax until withdrawal via your self-directed RSP and use the investment to lower your income tax. There are also upfront returns via a lender fee that you receive. You are your, the lender, so that is your fee for service, and this gives you an immediate return on your capital. The fees are low to get into this type of investing, and the legal and other fees are paid by the borrower, with the exception of your fees to the trustee. Another huge benefit is that you have control of the terms as opposed to other types of invest investing where the terms are out of your control. So you might be wondering, how safe and secure is my investment? First, it is facilitated by a licensed mortgage broker, which gives you an added layer of protection. You are registered on title on quality real estate, just like the banks are when they hold a mortgage. You receive monthly trustee statements from your self-directed RSP account to keep track of the transaction, and you receive a complete package upfront of any potential lending to determine if you are happy with the real estate and the borrowers before you loan the money. You are named on both the property insurance policy and title insurance policy as a lender. So if a de default does occur or an insurance claim, the funds go to you and not the property owners. And the mortgage broker helps if there are any mispayments or defaults as mentioned. When it's facilitated by a licensed mortgage broker, there is coverage provided via the mortgage broker's license and errors emissions insurance. Also, additional terms can be added to your agreement up front to mitigate any perceived risk in the initial agreement or later. A lien can be placed up front on other real estate if needed with a blanket mortgage. There's also a general securities agreement registered on the borrower personally. If needed, a mortgage broker can help you file a quick claim deed, and quick claims are signed agreements made between the lender and the borrower to relinquish certain claims to the other. The lender agrees to cancel the debt against the borrower, and the borrower agrees to give up the property to the lender. There can also be an assignment of rents and leases, which are included in the initial agreement if there's a rental component to the property. And this has two benefits. It permits the lender to receive the rental payments that the borrower or landlord would otherwise be entitled to. And this revenue stream from the tenant is a significant asset that should be secured. Also, it permits the, bill, the lender to step into the shoes of the borrower or landlord and exercise all the rights and remedies available to the landlord to ensure the full benefit and value of the lease is realized by the lender, which includes, for example, the right to demand payment in the event of non-payment of rent by a tenant, and to assign the lease to a purchaser in the event of a power for sale, power of sale proceeding. Another source of additional security that can be required up front is being the beneficiary on the mortgage or life insurance policy of the borrower. Or you can also have the borrower prepay the mortgage payments up front in a lump sum, paying monthly instead of paying monthly mortgage payments. So these are some of the ways to add security to the transaction and mitigate risk. So what exactly is default? Default is said to have occurred when the borrower is either one, not adhering to terms and conditions of the mortgage, such as not making the payments on time or not having enough funds in their account, resulting in an NSF and other fees to the lender. The second type of default is non-payment of property taxes, condo fees, or home insurance. And the third type is not keeping the property well-maintained since that is your collateral and your security on the loan. And the fourth type is non-payment of home insurance. I've already covered those, so let's move on. So the default process happens when you attempt to do remedy the situation with the borrower 
with the help of the broker and the problem still exists or persists. If there is an issue, it is dealt with right away to the satisfaction of the lender. However, there is always risk to a lender that a borrower could stop paying if this happens. So if this happens, the lender and mortgage broker work quickly to determine a solution. And if foreclosure needs to happen, it can be acted upon with the help of the lawyer. However, there is no guarantee that you will not lose your principal and interest. And this is why the initial deal evaluation and information provided the mortgage broker is so important. So you can hopefully completely avoid any default situation. If default does happen, the steps we take, number one, call the broker acting on your behalf of the borrower. Number two, we are solution pro providers. So we speak to the borrower to see why the problem happened and how soon they're going to correct it. We also find out if this is a one-off situation or if there is a concern about ongoing ability to make payments or future upcoming issues. None of us want lawyers to get rich, so we only involve lawyers if we can't fix the problem satisfactory in a timely manner. However, 15 days after a late payment or other issue has occurred, it, at that point, it's legally deemed to be in default to the point where legal action can be implemented. None of us want to act out of fear, so knowing up front these steps is very important. Now let's look at the typical terms. For a first mortgage, the overall return is 6 to 12 percent per year, typically broken down into monthly payments to you, around 5 to 9 percent interest, and that might include some principal up front. And then there's a lender fee of 1 to 3 percent of the amount that has been borrowed. For second mortgage, the overall return is 10 to 17 percent per year. And that's typically broken down into monthly payments to you of around 10 to 12 percent interest, which may include some principal, and as well an upfront lender fee of 1 to 5 percent of the amount that has been borrowed. The borrower pays your legal fee and their legal fee, as well as a broker fee. Terms are typically six months to two years and can be one year with an offer for renewal and a new lender fee after the first year. Payments are interest only on a monthly basis or paid as a lump sum upfront from the initial advance. This helps the client who wants no monthly payment. So before you say yes to a deal, you'll receive a complete submission to lender package, which outlines the executive summary with all the terms, the property description, photos, inspection information, property tax information, and potentially an appraisal report. It'll give you proof of all mortgage financing that is currently being lent on that property, and the proof of the ability of this client to repay this loan. Also, we give an explanation of why the borrower needs this loan versus a bank loan. So why not be a banker? There are many opportunities and there is high demand for private lenders given the new mortgage rules, the mortgage stress test, and many other things that can arise in the borrower's life. You do need about 50,000 to lend to get started in order for it to make sense. Let us help you with your strategy. To remind you again, you can use your home equity, you can use your existing RSP account, or you can open a new self-directed RSP account, Olympia Trust, Community Trust, or Western Financial Trust. At the end of the term, you can cash in, or you can reinvest on renewal time if needed with the same borrower. So, as we said, opportunities are plentiful. Not only do I have borrowers coming to me needing funds, but I am part of a mortgage team called the Windrose Group Team with over 50 mortgage agents. I share the availability of your funds via our private Facebook team group, as well as I share your lending criteria. I also share this information with my team leader at the Windrose Group, Claire Drage. So we also tap into her client base of borrowers to allow her to know that there's a lender with funds available. So I'm gonna go over two examples of loans. You can look on page 17 to 19 of the Be The Banker booklet that you're gonna receive 
and that will show another sample as well. We did this first mortgage a few years ago. So this is an opportunity for lending $231,000 with a 9% overall return, and it's considered low risk. This is a property in of a detached home in Saskatchewan, and it was 66% loan to value based on the current value of that home of $350,000. It had a first mortgage on it, and it was private first mortgage being paid out with this new private mortgage. So the reason that they needed these funds is that the borrower and the family had 10 lots of land, and the brother has built four new homes. They've retained one to live in, they sold two, and the last one is complete and it's a show home. So this new mortgage repaid an existing first with some extra funds for carrying costs, and the existing lender required their funds back. The show home was a was to help to pre-sell the five new builds in 2019. These were excellent existing clients where we financed Barrett land to get them to this stage. These borrowers were not bankable because they're self-employed with low taxable income, plus they're financing a spec home and banks and other lenders don't like that. The exit strategy is that once the homes are pre-sold, then the borrower will sell this property to pay back the mortgage. So the return was a lender fee of $4,620 up front, which is 2% of the mortgage amount. The monthly payments coming in are $1,347.50, which is an interest rate of 7%. And the, the overall return was $20,790 on the $231. So that grew the return to 251,790 after a year. So the total return for one year to the lender is 9% secured against the brick and mortar in first position. So an example of a second position mortgage, which was considered medium risk, um, it was a refinance to pay out an existing second mortgage with some debt and renovation to help develop the basement of this principal home in Toronto. They own the home since 2002, and the loan to value is 82.544% based on the current value of $966,400. The client has a first mortgage with RBC that was in good standing, and it didn't make sense to pay that out with a penalty. They have good credit of 656, and the borrower is an actuary, newly self-employed, and having worked the last six years with multiple employers. They have 184,000 in revenue last year, and they're on track for the same for the current year. So why do they need this mortgage? The first is a great interest rate, and the current second mortgage lender has higher rates, plus the borrower required the additional funds for renovations and debt consolidation. It's not a bankable option because they're self-employed for less than two years, which banks do not want to lend those types of people. Exit strategy is to refinance when the first mortgage is up for renewal, and then also at that point, the client would have a longer history of self-employment, as well as a lower loan to value when the basement is finished. So the lender's return is $12,100 up front of 5% of the mortgage amount. The monthly interest rate with interest only payment, excuse me, monthly interest return with interest only payments is $2,016.67, and that's a 10% interest rate. So it's $36,300.04 return on the 242, and the total return is 15%, again, secured against brick and mortar in second position. So use these examples to get your mind thinking of what opportunity is right for you. Okay, so what are the next steps? You want to assess if this feels right for you. Work with myself and Gretchen to develop a plan for your wealth goals. Next, just go forward and do it. And as you get experienced with the process, rinse and repeat. And how do you connect with us? We've shared with you our direct numbers, email addresses, and way to connect with us on social media. 
We want to say a big thank you. You spent an hour or more of your time to explore options and to grow your network. This is a valuable piece of information that we shared with you, and we hope that you learned how to be the banker. Now let's learn how to make money together. Bye-bye. Take, Take care. care.